knock at my door um, and they said it's Rochester police. Mm -hmm. And I'm to the point, well, okay, you know, I'm in, I know I'm in a litigation against the city school district. I know that I've had past bad experiences with the city school district. So when I go to the door, the police officer, this one officer, Officer Calla, he, yeah. was, he was the same officer that was involved in the shooting on Locust Street, the, the same officer that was involved with the, kid, the hit and run on Dewey Avenue. You know, he's, he's, he's got a, a track record. I've done my research too, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so he busts in the door. His partner, also was a female partner with him too, was like actually three police officers. The female officer basically kind of stood back. Those two guys were like basically like two pit bulls on a stake. Mm -hmm. One threw the weapon in the back of my head, threw me to the floor. Mm -hmm. My wife was trying to run to me like, what's going on? Calla jumped on her, maced her, mm -hmm. and started punching her in the face. Mm -hmm. He jumped on her chest, he was just punching her like you pummel someone in the street. Did they explain why they were there at all? Or did they, just they said they had a warrant for my arrest from uh, the Rochester City School District uh, because I violated the road protection for taking my child back to school. <laughs> now it's kind of ironic that a lot of black men are stereotyped that they don't take care of their children. Right. I'm taking care, I take care of my children, both my daughters. One is a successful lawyer, mm -hmm. and my other daughter is an honor student at School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. You know, me and my wife are both college educated. Um, you know, I'm a veteran, you know. I've never been in trouble until I started dealing with these people here in mm -hmm. Rochester. And it's ironic when this guy did it. So, to make a long story short, you know, I'm, I'm screaming like, you know, what's going on? Yeah. The other officer clicks the hammer on the Glock in the back of my head. Really? And I've heard that before. All right, Ted? I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. And I didn't know whether with my training, did it take him down in the fear from my family or to basically die? So I, my third choice was to pray. And I did that. Mm -hmm. So he eventually got off my wife, the female officer, and seated. That's enough, what she said. I saw my wife from the corner of my head, my eye. Um, um, bloody, you know, about the face. Mm -hmm. And um, this officer grabs me up, throws a gun in my face still, takes her outside. The other officer takes her outside and uh, sits her. This is winter time. Basically like a display because people in the neighborhood. So by that time, my family, my wife's family is coming. And so the sergeant at hand comes and basically say, what's going on? Uh, I'm trying to, you know, get up. They got me cuffed now. I'm sitting on the back of my couch. Um, and I'm like, why is this happening? You got to you got a warrant for your arrest and, you know, you ain't got shit to stand on. And da, 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 da. You, you got to stop fucking with important people. This is what he said. So I said, important people that I'm suing? So by that time, my brother-in-law, Don, is there. And he's like, who did this to my sister? So this cop, Calla, is strutting across my lawn. I did it. And my family is getting irate. They ready to crash these guys. So the other cops that's there on scene, because they had to be about eight cars, mm -hmm. basically snatches the officer, put him in a separate patrol car, get him out of the scene, get him away to calm him down and they take me to jail they take my wife to the hospital my wife was in the hospital for about six months physically she was in there for about two and a half weeks and mentally after the beating about six almost five and a half months you know i was my wife wasn't charged with anything my wife was i was charged with so-called like criminal contempt in the first degree like i stated earlier for uh taking my child back to school. And this has been ongoing with the city school district. I want the viewers to know, um, basically because of a litigation, a civil rights lawsuit I have against, I had against the school district. And the key people that's involved is Van White, um, Kara Briggs, who's a judge in Pittsburgh. And she is also a, a lawyer for the city school district. Um, 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 Alpha Daily Majors, um, and Kim Dice Fawcett and William Fawcett, who is the former chief of staff of the city of Rochester under Mayor Johnson. So this is political type squeezing me. Mm -hmm. They want me to drop this lawsuit because Kim Dice Fawcett wanted to be superintendent. And she actually ran for superintendent here and lost. Okay. Um, 
I, in turn, refused to drop the lawsuit. So anyway, I'm down in jail. I'm trying to figure out where is my family? Where is my wife? They snatched my daughter. My daughter's with a family member. Uh, my wife is bloody. That's the last scene. I seen her going in the ambulance. Um, you know, I'm in jail. So, you know, I'm like, this lawyer is telling me, this Bronwyn Van Hoof from the public defender's office told me, oh, they got you on film. You came down there. I said, they told me I had to. They filed a CPS complaint against me saying that because me and my wife, because we both college educated or homeschooling our child, mm -hmm. we had to bring her back because if we didn't, we don't charge it was educational neglect. Now, we homeschooled our child for almost a year and a half, almost two years. There was no complaints until Kim Dice was running for superintendent. Mm -hmm. And that lawsuit was standing. So she wanted to get me out of the way as in hindsight and reflection back to basically debate me or try to get me out of the way so she can be possibly superintendent. Um, from that point on, um, I had false charges. And if earlier, where uh, when I went to go clean out my classroom area at the city school district at Franklin High School, um, this individual uh, basically said I never signed in, I never got a visitor's pass. Um, Don Murphy, who's a good friend of mine, who's a teacher, basically got a copy of the visitor's sign in and I already had my visitor's pass. So we presented it in court because they had me for criminal trespass and a lot of other stuff. And I went in front of Teresa Johnson, who I really don't approve of as a judge here in the city because she, she lets her personal, personal connections and her personal beliefs get involved in her judgments. Mm -hmm. That's not about law. Law is about being impartial. Mm -hmm. I look at the law, uh, how you can say, um, a statue, a uh, 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 judicia. She wears a blindfold and scales for a reason, mm -hmm. all right? And, and it's not happening here, okay? So to make a long story short, you know, she's like, oh, you need to pre-out. They're going to give you, take a plea deal. They're offering you five years probation. Now, I've never been in trouble. I, I don't have a record. I'm a veteran. I serve combat tours. You know, um, I'm good with it. I can walk the line, you know. Uh, I just want to know where my family is. Mm -hmm. I need to know where they're at, you know. Uh, RPD, before they booked me, had me in there, basically just interrogating me. You know, do you have any weapons? We know you were a former Army Ranger. Do you have any weapons? I said, I don't have any weapons. They already stereotyped me and put me in this nice, neat little bag, okay. Um, I told them to search my house. Ruby McClendon, who was a vice principal, at school of the uh, uh, young mothers program, mm -hmm. basically let them search my house, and there was no weapons there. Okay, uh, they still charged me with uh, menacing, and that charge. Okay, so all right, I get the plea deal. Judge Miller, who's I think is the biggest sellout in this town, is a judge. Okay, basically, by the law, this individual that made this complaint, Kim Dice Fawcett, has to be in court for the preliminary hearing. She never showed up. He brought me in front of him because he's also a friend with Adam McFadden. I want to say that too, right? Uh, basically said, you know, I got enough evidence. She doesn't have to show up. That was illegal right there. They should have dropped the charges and they proceeded to prosecute me, all right? Um, I got out, got five years probation. They put an ankle bracelet on me because they want to GPS me. I had one, one sheriff said, yeah, you rangers can get away real easy, so we got to put a tag on you. Like he was saying, like you tag animals in the wild. Yeah. And that, that pisses me off, you know, because I have a bronze star and a purple heart. You know, I've served this country yeah. with distinction, you know. Um, so make a long story short, you know, I go home. I got my daughter in family court now because now the district has pursued the charges. And family court also. Is this the educational neglect? Thing yes. About? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, because you 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 and your wife are homeschooling. Homeschooling. Right? My, I mean, I'm gonna let people know. I have an engineering degree from Howard University, mechanical engineering. My wife has a master's degree from Cornell University in public administration. Mm -hmm. She also has another master's degree in public administration from LIU. So we're very capable <laughs> of teaching your daughter. Of teaching our daughter. <laughs> okay. Possibly better than the city school district, okay? Um, I've talked to individuals such as Mary Adams. They basically blew me off. This blew me 
mm -hmm. off because it's the same little political clique. They want to stay good with it. Mm -hmm. All right, make a long story short. Later on that year, after I get my daughter back, my wife is still in the hospital. Later in June, uh, well, actually May, my daughter didn't receive her report card. She's going to school 30. Um, the vice principal said, out of all the kids in the school, your daughter's the only one. You want to speak to the superintendent about this? I know your past troubles, what's going on. You know, you need to talk to someone about this. Mm -hmm. I said, sure, I'd like to talk to the superintendent. So we patched through on a three-way. Superintendent's not there, okay? Uh, this um, secretary takes the message. Mm -hmm. Three days later, police back at my house. And it's ironic that one of the officers was Glenn Harris, who's now the um, deputy chief. Mm -hmm. So he's with another Italian cop. So they know what happened before. So I'm on them ready. I'm like, you know, all right, if you come in here, I got my daughter in here. It's not going to be another time of this. So, but I'm not being aggressive. I'm just on the defensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that defensive is a very big difference to being aggressive. Okay. Um, he comes in the house. I'm soldering a circuit board, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing computer work. That's how I'm surviving. The one officer said, we got, a, we got another warrant for you. It's for aggravated criminal contempt for contacting the superintendent. You contact this person's place of business, they're going to violate your probation. You know, they're going to charge you with aggravated criminal contempt also. When you have to go. I said, I'm not going anywhere until a family member come get my daughter. So this one, not Glenn Harris, but the other Italian cop that was with him, mm -hmm. basically said he smelled crack in my house. Now, I'm, I'm 53 years old. I bench press over 300 pounds. I've never used crack in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything that's going to make me weak. I didn't know about that until I got to jail. So I'm down there. The law stipulates that you have to have a probation hearing within a month, mm -hmm. two weeks, something like that. They hold me down there to September, and that's from June to September. Wow. All right, then they finally have my hearing. They bring these people in. They still haven't proved that I did anything other than trying to be a father. Right. So this other judge, Judge Keenan, who was a racist to the core, who they later on removed from the bench because a lot of his cases was coming back from the appellate division being overturned. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about murder cases, rape cases, burglary cases, serious cases. So why am I in front of this judge? Mm -hmm for doing the right thing because it's a political intimidation. He tried to get me to plea out. I wouldn't plea out to nothing. You prove this case because I haven't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. So he's pissed off that I'd sing him through this. He violates my probation. He gives me a one to three in state prison. And that's how you became incarcerated? Yes. And did you go right from that hearing to jail? or how did that I went straight to county. Yeah. Now, the usual thing, if other people were telling me, when you're down, you're sent to the state prison, usually you're down there a month and a half, 45 days, two months, but it's possibly longer. I was out there in less than a week and a half. Wow. Okay? I was on my way to Wendy Correctional Facility, then to Elmira, and then to eventually to Groveland Correctional Facility where I was at, which is a minimum, a low, medium mm -hmm. security. Um, regards, I didn't do what I did. Mm -hmm. So being having a one to three state prison, I had to go right to my parole board within four to five months, six months, something like that. I go in front of a parole board, it's another thing that's really a waste of state money. I want to emphasize this for the taxpayers. Now, someone like myself, a veteran, never been in trouble, mm -hmm. basically going from this board, I should get out. I have a home, right, a mortgage, I don't rent, I pay taxes, I have a family, you know, boom, they denied my parole because they said I wouldn't admit to my crime. Admit to what? Right. All right. So I watched a guy that had the same thing that's been upstate three times that was in there for being a pedophile, makes parole. Hmm. So if they want to look at that system, that's another story. It's not about, you know, who's can be, prog how can you say, um, progressive back in society. Mm -hmm. It's about what they want, the recidivism. They want that to exist mm -hmm. so they can get people back that keeps them and make money. So I did my total two years because when they did, they when they banged me at the board, they banged me to make me do my whole sentence. Wow. Okay. They wanted you to do the whole three. The, whole, the well, the, well, I did a one to three. You do two years on the one to three and do one year parole. Oh, I see. So right. they wanted you to do that whole thing. That whole thing. And that's what you did. I did the two years. Oh, you so you didn't do the one year parole. Though. And I did also did the one. I did actually eight months, eight and a half months of parole. 
My case went in front of the appellate division, fourth department. My case was unanimously overturned. Wow. Uh, unanimously, which is unusual. Yeah. All five judges concurred. They didn't even, the key thing is they didn't even look at the issue that I brought up and my attorney brought up. They saw something totally else different that was wrong with the case. And they went to the case, as they say, they brought up Sus, Sus Monte, Spumante or whatever. I sound like the wine, but uh, Suspante. Well, that's, that's the correct term. But, um, and they overturned my case. They said the whole deal they did me, they gave this person an order of protection. She's not a victim of a crime. She wasn't a victim of anything. We didn't even have domestic relations. This is a labor dispute. She doesn't, doesn't fall in this category. The judge, the DA, and his attorney should have saw this. And we're dismissing this outright. And, and they just, you know, you're, you're, the conclusion is that they had some sort of connection together. They didn't recuse themselves, obviously. No, none and of that stuff. And just want to get you out of the picture they as fast as possible. They wanted quick, fast as possible. Yeah. And the thing about that also I want to emphasize, when the appellate division overturned my case, they overturned my case to go back to trial. Twice. This is, okay, now, this is the key thing. So now you got to bring all these people back. And I approve, I applaud the, the appellate division now because they want to see here. Now these people have to prove their but case. You did what you did. What, what I did. did. Yeah. Kim Dice never showed up. The cop that said I had crack in my house never showed up or the weapon never showed up. Right? Mm -hmm. So the DA took it in front of a grand jury twice. Both times they no build it. And finally, they try to get me to, to take a plea again. Say, we'll just say time served. I said, no. If you take me back to trial, or you dismiss it outright. Right, right. So the judge, Donolfo, got tired of it. and said, I'm dismissing this outright and sealing your record. I have something to say, Judge, Your Honor. And I explained it to the DA. And I let Sandra Dorley know that I'm coming after you legally yeah. for what you did to my family. So now I file what is known as an 8B case against the Court of Claims from the State of New York for the legal confinement, malicious prosecution. Sandra Dorley blocks me from getting my own sealed file. We had to go back in front of the judge, subpoena, he lifted it, and we got it. Wow. And we presented it in front of Judge Maneri. But this is all going back to the corrupt city school district, because I want to emphasize one of the board members was my attorney before he sat on the board was Van White. Mm. And he's corrupt to the core. Because I paid $6,500 out of my daughter's college fund, my youngest daughter. And he said I never paid him a dime. And the minority reporter, he's lying again. He's part of the problem. And come to find out later on, he endorsed Kim Dice to be superintendent. All along he was taking my money and he dismissed my case illegally in federal court. Wow. He's got charges against him through the New York State Bar and the AG's office right now. So if he wants to run for another bid, I don't think he's going to get it. Mm -hmm. That includes Charles Johnson, Carol Briggs, and others. You know, right. you know what incenses me even more is when, when they step to a podium, a DA, said the people are ready. Now, is it truly all the people or the privileged and politically connected few? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so, tell me about PSS. You filed with PSS. PSS is, is, is a joke. Officer Malley is a clown, okay? He's a liar. He has no integrity. He's a disgrace to the badge. So, let's go back. Um, when, do you remember when about you filed? I PSS? filed it in right before, I was in, right after I was in uh, let go, I was on um, house arrest with the ankle bracelet. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to professional standards on Lake Avenue. I sat, had the video. I did the everything. They asked me questions and I wouldn't bend. It was more like I was being interrogated. Like their officers are above and reproach of the law. No, that's not the case, man. So when I started saying all these things, he said, we'll get back to you. He never got back to me. Next thing I know, I'm going to prison. And three years later, I get a letter from Duffy. Hmm. All right. Saying that there's no findings in this. And I wish you the best of luck. Um, and then what was Sergeant Malley's role in this? He was the lead investigator. And, and um, you, you, you made some very strong statements that I don't disagree with. But I'm wondering if you can talk more about his role and what your experience with him was. Okay, so basically, let's say you're a victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's a certain type of uh, rapport that you treat a victim. Mm 
-hmm. And it seemed like that every time you went to PSS and do these complaints, you're the enemy. Right. You know? Like, like they're, they're I'm out to get police officers. officers. Right. And, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to go after this officer. I know there's good officers out here. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I want the bad ones. Okay? So he makes the complaint. I got the actual written complaint that he did in his handwriting. Okay. And uh, I'm going to get that to you too also. And um, it's ironic that I'm a member of UCLM and of Coalition for Police Reform now. I sit as co-chair, okay, on this. Yeah. And to see this Lieutenant Sorelli or Cerulli yeah. come in and give a presentation, it made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Now, with this IA Pro software, we got this officer that beat my wife that has been consistent in different complaints from 2001 that you said you started this software. And he's been consistent. And he's still in Rochester Police Department. So now this is a thing that we need civilian oversight because, and also subpoena power. Mm -hmm. Because basically now you're taking this out of the civilians, the people that you're supposed to serve and protect, mm -hmm. okay, out of the equation and letting the cops there police themselves yeah. and that brotherhood. I was a ranger. I know it was a brotherhood. I've been in two combat tours, right? I know that brotherhood exists, that you look the other way on certain things, mm -hmm. right? But this is not a war zone, right. okay? This is the community that you live and lay your head in. And this is why I feel strongly about the RPD. And I think the FBI should be involved mm -hmm. in investigating the RPD. Because until we have an outside agency that's unbiased, mm -hmm. that look at these things, for the la not just what happened with me, but for the last 25 to 30 years, mm -hmm. That's the only way we're going to get any type of justice here in this city, right. you know. Um, yeah, so Lieutenant Calary. Yes, Calary, yeah, excuse the, me. No, no, yeah, he yes. was, he's the commanding officer of PSS now. Yes, no, yes. And um, I, I filmed or, or audio recorded that whole presentation, and I know you were very vocal in that presentation. Yes. And I'm just wondering, like, um, can you give me some more thoughts about, like, when you heard that this was happening, what you wanted to get out of that conversation? The, like? the, the first thing that really got me is if you hold a title and you're in a leadership position, mm -hmm. you don't have to emphasize who you are and what you're about. Mm -hmm. That protrudes in your leadership, in your presentation. The first thing came out of his mouth, he said, I'm a Christian. That, and I'm a Christian. You know, um, that brought up my antennas. And then the, the IA Pro software, how you emphasizing there's changes here. So when I get pose a question to him, how far back are you going to do these changes as far as that emphasizing an investigation? Because if this software shows what it shows, being an engineer, it shows facts and data. Unless you, as a human, skew that data, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get the lies in. As we know from the four categories that he presented in his mm -hmm. presentation, that um, people didn't show up, or there was enough, not enough evidence, mm -hmm. and that was the majority of the two. Yeah, I think he said like I remember right. the stats like 145 or something. Yes, sir. allegations. Allegations. Were found were what was it like? Unapproved. Uh, un yeah. Un 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 unfounded. Or, or, yeah. Because basically they said that they took the position of the police and the civilian as equal. Right, as equal. And if, the, and if there right. was no evidence beyond that, then they would dismiss it. They would dismiss it. Which is crazy to It's me. crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. that's why you should have a body outside that body right. that's independent, that has any ties, no ties, mm -hmm. to, to, to city council, mm -hmm. the police department. They represent the civilians, the citizens they bolster represent right. we need this in the city okay because the city is going to be bled dry if they don't make some type of change i don't care how good your lawyer is if a cop is bad he's bad right. and if let's explain if the feds get involved then you're going to really going to have a really mess on your hand okay because then now you can look at coercion hiding evidence because benny war's case is the prime example of hiding evidence oh, God, yeah. my case is the prime example of hiding evidence uh, the young men that got jumped over on Genesee Street, they're going in the laundromat. Oh, That's yeah. a prime example of hiding evidence. And I do want transparency, but their, their definition of transparency is a glass of water that's cloudy. You can see through it a little bit, but you can't see all the way through it. 
All right? And that's how I feel about it. What he did was basically giving us a company spill to the community. And when myself and you, Ted, start asking the key questions, it's about escape and evade. Right. I learned that as a ranger, escape and evade. <laughs> you know, just don't give them a fair target. If I can duck and dodge and say this and say that, yeah. you know, I called the Sergeant Snow about my case recently after that. Oh, you did? I, How, what happened with that? I haven't got a re return call. This has been almost, what, two weeks now since we've had this? Yeah, yeah. So, if you want the facts, if you want the transparency, be careful for what you ask for because it's not going to be like what you like mm -hmm. about your officers. Right. You know? And again, I want to emphasize, I'm not crashing every RPD officer. Right. Just the bad ones. And it's a consistent of bad ones. Cowboy, Cala, you know, other ones. You know, yeah. we know the names, the community knows the names. Right. And if Mayor Warren wants change, then enact that the city council override and look at these cases. Because if they're responsible to you, then look it over. Mm -hmm. Let's not be politically correct on this because it's been a, too much of a problem of being politically connect. Yeah. And Adam McFadden, I'm going to say this to you personally. I'm looking in the camera. If you are the public safety officer, stop saying there's no search and frisk in Rochester. As a black man living in the Genesee area, and you talk about your past, you want to sell out, brother, just to keep your seat? Speak the truth. Because karma is a mother, and it's going to come around and bite you. You know, And I'm going to say, what happened to you at the uh, public housing authority, that's just part of that karma. So either do what you're supposed to do, brother, all right? What's morally right, not what's politically right. You know, yeah. so I know you probably get pissed off. You'll never want to debate me. No, I've, I've, no. I've, I've also asked DKX to put me, Van White, and these people on DKX. And let's talk about these facts. Yeah. I'm a member of the community. I pay taxes. I don't rent. I'm not a homeowner. I'm, a, I'm excuse me, I am a homeowner. Yeah, homeowner yeah. You know, come on. Yeah. That's what you're afraid of. What are you afraid of? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I'm curious why, just going back to the PSS presentation, mm -hmm. but... Yes. Lieutenant Clary and I think Sergeant Snow both raised how appreciative they were of our efforts on the body mm. camera issue. Mm. And the cynic in me says that whenever the police say, great job in that work, that makes me very skeptical of the work that we did. And they loading up the sidearm. Yeah. You know, they loading up, not, I'm not saying in a literal form with no, actual no. rounds, but, <laughs> but, but, but actual, you know, points they can get back at you to make yeah. this not happen. Yeah. You know, um, as you know, uh, UCLM had... Um, uh, the union chief, um, uh, Mazio in, initially when we we're doing this, and he said it'll never happen in Rochester. Right. You know, we've done our studies, da, da, da. and so now he's sitting in front of the boards, and it's happening. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There is a mentality, an old school mentality here with the police force here, mm -hmm. that when they come in the city, they police on us as animals. Right. We're not animals. I'm an engineer. My wife, you're two, not animals. Two masters, yeah. Yeah, you know, come on. You know, <laughs> we choose to live in the city because I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and this is much better than Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. I can leave my door. I don't have to have armor guard and bars on my windows. Mm -hmm. I can leave my laptop in the backseat in my driveway, and I can possibly one day, not too many times, it'll be still there. Yeah. You know, but, you know, let's stop this mentality and stop bringing it on poverty. It's not poverty. And have people sit at the round table that totally experience the things that you're talking about. Yeah. Not just your privileged few right. around that round table because you're not going to get any type of solution or conclusion. Right. You know? Because the, the, well, the wolves are sort of monitoring the hen house. Or something yes. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll make sure I don't eat the first one. But if you stay back one hour, I'll let you have two the next hour. Right. That's, the, that's the deals that are being made mm -hmm. under the table. Unite Rochester is a joke. That's another example of things. This you got Sandra Dooley, Sandra Dooley in this. Mm -hmm. You got you got Judge Miller. You got people. They got their minions that 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 look up to them. That's with them. But go down into the hood. Let's go on Berlin Street and grab people from down there. Yeah. Let's go on the website on, on Genesee and mm -hmm. Sawyer. Let's go all parts of the city where you say it's rough and grab these people and sit down and have a round. Talk together, yeah. and let's talk yeah. because it's the only way you're going to get any type of solution. What happened to me and my family and others in this city is a tragedy and it'll keep happening until you get and look at the solutions. You know, do you have anything else you want to add about your case specifically? I'm going to be relentless, I'm going to be like a pit bull on a stay. 
I'm going to let Mayor Warren know uh, too also. I'm coming after the city next. I'm just dealing with the state now. The city's next. I've already sent you a notice of order. It's, uh, you know, it was filed back two years ago. So it's still good. It's already there. Mm -hmm. Also, too, quit relying on Van White to guide you what's going on in this district. He is the most hypocritical person that he can have in this, we can have in this district as citizens and as parents. We need to get this out of here. If you want the schools to improve, get the same key people that's been there for years out of there. Get them out of there. And then you'll see an improvement at the bus terminal. You'll see an improvement in the behavior of the students. You'll see an uh, improvement in the curriculum and graduation rates of the students. Get these same gatekeepers and cronies out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all I have to say. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, you said.